Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about cooking without power. Hi, I'm Sherry Ann Richardson from Experimental Homesteader, Exotic Gardening, SherryAnnRichardson.com and BiannualBlogathonBash.com and welcome to our daily vlog. Um, task number eight of the uh, survival prepper tasks for beginners is to make a plan for cooking without power. If you were to lose power today and not have it again indefinitely, how would you cook each night? You need ways to start a fire, um, to boil, fry, grill, and bake food for your family. You also need a uh, fire starter equipment as well as gear that can handle outdoor um, cooking. You might use a grill but that requires that you have charcoal or wood to put in it. Um, so you'll need things like flint, matches, and more. You might choose a wood-burning stove inside, but if it's summertime, you're really not going to want to do that unless you are lucky enough to have a summer kitchen. And then you still may not want to do that because it's going to heat up your house. If you don't have a charcoal grill and you have a gas grill, that runs on propane, um, you're going to need a source for that propane because it doesn't last indefinitely. So um, these are things that you need to think about because let's face it, if the power goes out, everybody's going to have the same problem about cooking. And gas grills are very popular, so people are going to run out and they're going to buy all that propane up. And if there's a supply shortage, they may not be getting more propane in. So in that event, do you know how to build a fire? It looks simple. It is simple once you know how, but if you've never done it, it can be difficult to get the wood started. Um, something that I've noticed is that matches are getting harder to find. One store that we go to a lot, I was told that they weren't going to be carrying matches anymore. And I kind of thought to myself, wow, yes, you can buy a lighter. Yes, you can buy lighter fluid. Yes, you can keep it, you know, keep your lighter filled that way. But a lot of people like us like matches. So that can be problematic. You're going to need some kind of fire starter, whether that is old newspapers, toilet paper, or um, paper towel rolls that you can stuff with lint from your dryer. Um, fact is, you can take lint from your dryer and put some candle wax on it from burning a candle and just let it drip, and that can be a great fire starter. But again, you've got to have some way to light that. So even if you have, you know, a flint or something like that, if you don't know how to use it, it's the time to learn to do that is not when the emergency happens. Um, of course, there are solar cookers and we have one of those. We actually have two of those um, because over on experimentalhomesteader.com, I tell you how to build one from just a cardboard box and a few other items like a perlite and aluminum foil. So you could build one. You could buy one. Um, I have, like I said, we have the one we build and then I have an actual sun oven kit. And that's great, but you've got to have sun and those are not as easy to figure out as what it seems. Um, I actually had to contact the company because I just couldn't get the food inside to come up to temperature. And they gave me some various tips that I could try to help bring that food up to temperature. And I have not had a chance to try those yet. But one of the items that they mentioned was to elevate the pot of food off the bottom of the sun oven so that he could get up underneath of it, which makes perfect sense. Um, they told me that once I got the hang of it, 
instead of having to constantly rotate and follow the sun that I would figure out exactly how to put it so it could sit in one place all day and just cook. But again, in an emergency situation when there's going to be a lot of chaos, there's going to be a lot of things that you just don't have, uh, like you might not have your cell phone. You won't have computers. So your life is going to be turned upside down. And the last thing you want to do is worry about what are you going to eat. This is why you need to make a plan for cooking without power. You need to know what method of cooking are you going to use. And you need to practice using that method. Because you don't want to, you know, attempt it, fail, and have yourself and your whole family that's hungry and wanting food and starting all over again. Solar cooking is not as quick as using an oven or a stovetop. Uh, wood cooking is pretty, compa pretty comparable, um, I would say. Cooking on a barbecue grill, we all know that that takes time to get the charcoal or whatever we're using to bring that grill up to temperature. So again, it's going to take a little bit longer than just turning on the electricity or gas to your stove that you're using right now. And you need to learn to allow for that. Um, the other part of your plan for cooking without power needs to be what are you going to eat? Because if you don't have power, opening your refrigerator or opening your freezer is going to allow that food to thaw that much quicker. So unless you're going to can or otherwise preserve that food, the ideal thing would be to keep the refrigerator and freezer closed wrap them up in as many blankets as you can and tie the blankets tight to help insulate and keep that food cold. So do you have food in your pantry or meals that you have canned or freeze dried meals or whatever? Do you have meals that you can quickly and easily cook in the event of a grid down situation? And how many meals do you have? Do you have just enough for, you know, 72 hours? Do you have enough meals for six months? Do you have snacks? You know, have you thought about beverages? Do you have water stocked up? Do you have things other than water that your family might want? Because let's face it, water can get pretty boring after a while if it's just plain water. Um, do you have water to cook with? You know, there, there's another issue. Do you have clean water that you can cook with? Or are you going to have to find a water source and use a water filtration system or water purification tablets or whatever you have to purify the water so it's safe to use? All of these things should be part of your plan for cooking without power. And ideally, everyone in your family needs to know about that plan. And they need to know what to expect and what to do. And because maybe you're, you know, maybe you're not going to be able to do the cooking. Maybe you're going to be injured. You know, maybe you're just going to be out. I don't know hunting for other food, fishing, or, you know, whatever the case may be. So make a plan, write it down, inform everyone in your family what it is, let them know where the paperwork is. You know, you could even plan out some meals. Anything to make that type of situation easier is going to be something that you're going to be grateful for if the time ever comes that you don't have power and you need to have meals. And 
you know, we're not just talking the end of the world type situations. It could be a snowstorm. It could be a tornado. It could be high winds. You know, it. there are so many different scenarios that could cause you to lose power and need to provide meals for your family without the use of modern conveniences. So anyway, guys, um, that's task number eight. I hope you guys will subscribe. I hope this task was helpful for you. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments below. Thanks for watching and have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow with another daily vlog.